In this clip, we're going to talk about the clone stamp tool inside of After Effects. So what's the clone stamp tool? It's just another type of tool inside of After Effects. And what does it do? It takes a selected area from one of your layers and it paints it in another part of your canvas. In other words, it duplicates or clones part of a layer. And this can be placed in the same or in another layer. At the same time, it creates new properties that can be adjusted before and after the effect is made. So what is it for? It can be used to duplicate something or to remove something. It depends on how you want to use it. So how do we use it? If you want to follow along, you can go to the description of the video and download the assets for this clip. Okay, so for now, the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to grab this clone stamp clip and I'm going to make a new composition just by dragging it in to this uh, film icon and a new composition is created right away. So the clone stamp tool is located on the toolbar, which is also located on the top of your screen. I'm going to left click it for now. And if I try to make something, nothing will happen. And it says, use the paint rotor brush and redefine edge tool in a layer panel. With these tools, double click a layer to open it in a layer panel. I'm going to hit OK. So that means that I have to double click the layer so it can open the layer panel. And now I can actually activate the clone stamp tool. In this case, there's two property values that you want to consider uh, while you're doing your process, which would be how the selection is made and how the selection is applied. If we alt and left click on any part of a layer, that would mean that we are selecting that point in that layer. So if I come down to another area of my canvas, I'm going to start to see that reaction come in, right? Okay, now there's a couple of things here. The selection was this, but if I keep going, I, I just did a, like a little stroke here. If I keep going, I will eventually erase the this other balloon because it, it it's trying to paint the entire layer completely again. And every time I make a new stroke, as you can see in this time, the layer is, is, is different, right? Your, your, your layer itself is um, changing. So now the clone stamp tool is automatically updating and trying to duplicate uh, that position or that area. So if I come down and I make another stroke, you'll see that now I would make this one. When at first it was a balloon. So if I make more changes, and then more changes, and then I come another stroke, the balloon has completely disappeared because I have erased it from that area, right? Okay, so for now I'm gonna press Control C a bunch of times to undo that. And while I do that, you can see that every time I made a new stroke, it seems like a new, uh, well, a new clone stroke has appeared on my layer properties. So I'm just going to continue to do control C to undo that. And I'm going to leave this one balloon for now. So at this point, I already made one stroke. But if you want to change the way you are selecting your area, you can go to the brushes uh, palette. And in here, you can select one of the brushes of the preset brushes, or you can change, um, start changing to whatever it is that you want to um, use. In this case, if you are most likely cloning something, unless you already have an alpha channel, you probably want to blend it in with, uh, with the feathering, right? But you would have all these other settings here just in the brushes palette. So you can adjust your brush and you can change the diameter, the angle, roundness, hardness, etc. For now, I'm just going to select this uh, number 17, and I'm just going to scale it up. The second panel that you want to be looking at would be your paint panel. 
And in here, you have a couple of things. Uh, well, the level of opacity that it would apply when you apply your stroke. So for example, I'm going to press Alt one more time and select that area so I can try to duplicate this balloon. And I'm going to make another stroke on this area. Okay. Uh, the opacity was at 100%. But if I bring down the opacity here and I try another stroke, you'll see that the opacity that now uh, changes drastically. And that's by me changing this, this value. Uh, another, a couple of other settings here is uh, the flow. If I go to the opacity at 100 and I try to make another stroke, and I lower the flow amount, it'll be kind of harder to actually make that, although I have the opacity at 100%, and that's because of the flow has a low value. Um, another change we can do is the blending mode, but I'll leave that for now. We'll leave that for another video. You can change the channels that you're applying, um, and this one is very important, meaning um, it would go with the timing if you're working with the clip, like in this case. If uh, the duration would be a single frame. If I come in closer, you'll see that every, each one of these strokes is uh, visible in one frame. But if I go to the second frame, they will disappear. So if I change this duration to constant, and I come down and I make another stroke. I would have a new stroke applied to the layer, but this time this um, effect is not only visible in one frame, but the actual clip itself. And it's also following along like the original clip, as you can see. So if I switch it from constant to right on, and I apply it, suddenly it won't be visible. But that's because the effect would be applied throughout the playback of the actual uh, clip. And in here we have new keyframes or new settings just for this stroke that we can change so that way the effect can last longer or come in at any time. That's another change that can be done directly in the paint panel. Uh, another option is we can, if you're making changes and so on, you can do these presets. You can set up a preset for the layers and so on. And from here you can also change the source that you're going to be uh, cloning. Another thing that you can do is actually lock the time. So if you go to constant, come back to the original, uh, to the first frame. This one will be the only one that will not follow the motion of the original clip, and that's because uh, this one is locking the actual time. And that is actually applied when we do the stroke. But inside of the stroke properties, we have the actual time um, of the original layer if we wanted it to follow the motion, as you can see. Okay? So every time we make a stroke, a new paint stroke or a new clone stroke will be added with new properties. And all these properties can be keyframe at whatever time you want to animate them or whatever you may need them to do. Another thing that you can do is you can actually come directly to the strokes themselves and start deleting them if you don't like one of them or so on. And also if you select a stroke and you just simply want to redo it because you didn't like it, it, as long as you have that stroke selected, it will automatically um, update on the fly. It will delete the that's it will delete the previous clone inside of that stroke and apply the new one. And that is because it's uh, it's non-destructive, meaning that you can go to the first 
stroke that you did and you can delete that if you didn't like it or you can make changes uh, inside of the properties as well or you know go to the middle one and delete that one if you didn't like it and so on so there's no limits to what you can do with this effect um, it looks like a very simple effect and it is one of the most simple tools inside of After Effects so what is it for um, I've seen a lot of people use it to clean up their images um, inside of After Effects if they're working with images like um, that have alpha channels they don't want to go directly to another software like Photoshop and then clean it there so they just remove the uh, whatever data that they need to be removed from um, a layer alright so that's the clone stamp tool um, I hope you guys learned something I'll see you guys in the next one